What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use the extension transmuter to bring in models that were originally modeled in other programs. So files like 3, 3DS files, FBX files, OBJs, and a lot more. So I'm super excited about this because this really expands the ability of SketchUp to use external files. So today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials Black Friday page. So this page is the page where I'm putting all of the SketchUp related Black Friday sales um, onto a single page. I will note that I do have a couple deals in there on my courses as well. So make sure you go check that out. I will link to that in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I really do love working with SketchUp, um, its ease of use and all of that, but one of the problems that I keep running into is the quality of the models in the 3D warehouse can be iffy at best, right? So you can go through and you can find different models inside of the 3D warehouse, but they're gonna be of varying different quality, right? So like, for example, let's say that I wanted to bring in a chair model. So I could search for a chair and I could look at them, but you can see how these chairs just kind of vary in quality a whole lot. Like a lot of these, they look really good um, when you actually bring them into your model, but if you render them or other things like that, they don't have a lot of the things that you need, like these high higher quality textures. Like you can see how these are kind of low resolution textures that are in here. They're map kind of funny and it's just not gonna render out very nice. And so you can go to other websites though. You can go to websites like CG Trader, for example. So and you can find other 3D models. So there's 3D models like this one right here. And a lot of them come in though and they don't have SketchUp files that you can download. This one actually does, but a lot of these have like FBX files and OBJs, but not necessarily SketchUp files. And so what happens is you'll download those and they'll come with like all these different folders, right? And again, just for this chair, ignore that there is an S key page. SKP file in here. Um, a lot of them come with just like the FBX OBJ and then they've got another folder that has like maps and you're like, what do I do with all of this stuff, right? Okay, and so let's say we wanted to import this file type and I've downloaded the OBJ file. So I would do a file import and I would go find that file right here. But the problem is you're gonna run into a lot of different issues. So first of all, a lot of external files are just like super dense meshes and they come in with like millions of faces or tries or other things like that and SketchUp just can't really handle them, right? This one actually is fairly simplified so I'm not really worried about that. But notice how you have multiple different issues when you bring this in. So none of the textures are loaded, it's facing the wrong direction, it's too big. There's just a lot of problems problems with exporting external files with the native tools. You just start running into issues. Um, however, in the extension I want to talk about today, and it's not even really an extension, it's kind of a standalone program, it's called Transmuter. And so Transmuter is an extension from the same guys that brought us the Scatter extension. And so it's currently on sale right now. If you purchase the package of Transmuter and Scatter, those are going to be 50% off or they're 30% off by themselves. But what I love about Transmuter, and I'm going to go ahead and open that up. What I love about Transmuter is what it does is it allows you to drop in model files. You can see how you can bring in 3DS, DAE, FBX, OBJ, and STL. You can bring those in and it's got tools to actually optimize these for SketchUp. And then the Megascans bridge is just a whole nother thing which is super cool. It's like a single click to export things from Megascans. I'm not going to talk too much about that in this video, but what I'm going to do, and so I'm just going to open up that OBJ file right here. So what that's going to do is that's going to bring my model in. And notice how I'm running into the same issue, right? There's no textures in here, the file's still too big, other things like that. But the cool thing about this is we can fix all of those things. And so a lot of the time what'll happen is when you download a model file from an external location, it'll come with a folder that looks like this. That's going to have your mesh files in it, but then it's also going to have another folder that has the maps in it or the materials. And so if those aren't in the same folder, then SketchUp's not going to bring them in properly. Things aren't going to look very good. It's just not going to work very well. And then plus, if you get things like this bump map, for example, um, the bump map is going to um, be something that you can load into your uh, 3D rendering program. Um, with, with Transmuter, this actually gives us a place to put all of these things. Things. And so what it does is when you bring this in, it gives you options for setting up your mesh 
and it gives you options for setting up your materials. So we're gonna start by setting up our mesh and notice how it brings this in at our origin and it also gives us a scale model. So we can see how right now, for example, this is just way too big. So you can tell it this file actually needs to be about 50% of what it's being brought in as. Some some modeling programs, things don't always get modeled to scale, but you can set all of this up before you bring it into SketchUp. So in addition, and with this one, it's probably not that big of a deal, but in addition, there's also tools for mesh simplification. So if you were to bring this in, and I brought a file in earlier that had like 600,000 triangles, you can actually use this tool to simplify the mesh. So you can see I can drag this slider and this will actually go through and simplify this so it's a smaller file. So that can be super important when you're using something like SketchUp that doesn't always handle those big heavy meshes very well. In this case, let's say that we wanted to maybe simplify this mesh by 25%. It's not a very heavy mesh so I'm not super worried about it. Um, but you can use this in order to simplify that. There's also some proxy stuff you can do. I may talk about that on the rendering channel a little bit later. But for now, let's go in and let's set up our materials. So I'm going to turn off show edges. We're going to load these materials in. So if you go into the materials tab, you can see how this shows you all of the materials that are in your model. Well, you can click in here and it'll actually give you information about not only the color map or the texture map that goes in here, um, but also some other things that you could export to like a V-Ray or InScape proxy, um, which would be very cool as well. But for right now, let's just load in our materials. So you can see how it's looking for this material, right? The diffuse map. Well, I'm gonna tell it to go find that diffuse map. I'm gonna show it where that is. So in this case, this one is just gonna be this right here. Well, notice how as soon as I told it where to find this map, it went through and it found the other maps as well. So you can see how those maps are being brought in based on that file location. So now I can take this whole thing and I can click on the button for transmute and I can save that SketchUp file. So let's do this. Let's save one with the full mesh so I'm gonna save it with all of the different triangles and everything else. I'm gonna click on transmute. What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to go in and save this. So I'm gonna save this as full quality and hit the enter key and that's going to transmute that into a SketchUp file. Then if we click over into SketchUp, we can import that file into our SketchUp model. So I'm gonna drag my full quality into my model right here. And that's gonna let me drop this into SketchUp. So you can see how this allows us to bring those external files in, and maintain the UV mapping, the texture quality. So let's say that we were to do this again, but now let's simplify our mesh by 50%. Or let's do 75%. So you can see how this is showing you what the mesh is going to look like when it's simplified. Then we can take this, we can transmute it. We'll save this one as smaller file and click on save. Well then we can bring the smaller file into SketchUp as well. So I'm just gonna click and drag this over. So the first thing you might notice is these actually look very similar. Right, So this file and this file actually look about the same inside of SketchUp. So overall, I think they look pretty good. And the thing is, this one has 75% less polygons than this one. And so if we were to go in and look at the details for this, you can see how both of these chair models show up in here, but the second one is half the size of the first one. So what you can do is you can use this in order to import those files while also managing file sizes inside of SketchUp. So I, I just love using this tool because it gives me access to this whole world of other models that you can download that were made for other programs, but you can start using them inside of SketchUp. If you guys are interested, I can do a video on my rendering channel about exporting as proxies. So the proxies allows you to make these even smaller so that you load in like 
placeholder geometry inside of SketchUp, but then the full geometry gets loaded in the rendering program. So what that does is that makes your performance a lot faster in SketchUp while also allowing you to render really realistic images inside of your rendering program. So again, you can find information on that deal and all of the other SketchUp related Black Friday deals on my Black Friday page at the sketchupessentials.com slash Black Friday. If you have any questions about this extension, leave a comment below and let me know. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.